All right. Hello, everyone. It's another Roma Press podcast. We are <laughs> we are back. It is. I, I I know this is going to come off as a complaint, I'm, but I am obviously happy. Roma dismantle Monza in in Lombardia four to one. I am. Uh, listen, I I subscribe to conspiracy theories. I'm sure many of you do too. Uh, given uh, you know. Many of us like to delve into the drags of the internet. I'm sure there is some website that can cater to uh, my my quest for an answer as to how these uh, are the same players uh, that were on the pitch uh, six weeks ago at San Siro. I know there are many conspiracy theories involving uh, uh, like crisis actors, body doubles. I, that is where I have landed. For the team that we saw uh, get dismantled against Milan six weeks ago versus the one we see uh, on Saturday evening, tear apart Monza, tear apart Monza in a win that fits the kind of victory that I absolutely love, where it's a decisive victory on the scoreboard, uh, but it also is a match that displays plenty of uh, room for growth and improvement before we get into that obviously thank you to everyone over at patreon patreon.com slash roma press and then on youtube at is roma press that is also where you can find us on facebook twitter all of the usual social media platforms if you could like subscribe leave a review that would be helpful thumbs up all of that good stuff we would greatly Greatly, immensely, whichever word you prefer to use, appreciate it. All right, Andy. Fortuan, Monza, away from home. Let's just start there. That was one of your favorite um, talking points throughout the uh, mid portion of the season where Roma, it didn't matter what the opponent was, it didn't matter uh, where in the country they were playing. They could not win away from the Olimpico at all. They have more points under De Rossi in away I, games than they did all season long under the previous manager, which we're not going to name because remember the last time we started this whole discussion, we got into a shouting match and it wasn't a good look. <laughs> so we're not, we shall not mention the previous manager's name, but since De Rossi's no. arrival... We have played three away games in Serie A, and you know how many points? We got nine points compared to eight previous. Yes. It's astonishing. I uh, Listen, I don't want to dwell on it because, yes, the past is the past, but much like a conspiracy theory, I think I am owed. We are owed at least some sort of explanation or insight into the shit I, I, I look at what happened at San Siro and I compare it to tonight again. And I all of these conspiracy theories, uh, what, what is some, I'm trying to think of what like some of my favorite are. Uh, the, the magic bullet theory of uh, John F. Kennedy. That's a, that's a good one. Those were crisis actors. Those were bought. I, I need to get some. We, we have to have one of our patrons that looks like Alex Jones who has like that about? accent. Why are we talking about Lee Harvey? Oscar? Because, uh, because Why are we talking I, about I, the book I, depository I, 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 need, in Dallas, I, I, Texas I, I, I need on I need a Roma something. podcast? I need somebody to tell to me what is happening before my eyes. Because obviously it is a good thing. I enjoy it. I, I really like it. John. But I look at this and I think to myself. We're not going to go there. We're not going to no, get no, into no, 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 There should not. That was good but... for views. I mean, people enjoyed it. The people <laughs> dug it. You know, we had a lot I, of I, patrons coming in and subscribing thanks to that shouting match. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, what is um Stephen A. Smith and who, what was the other guy's name? Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless. Yeah. Hey, yeah. We, we, yes, we should. I mean, we can turn it into that, but ultimately... Yeah. I, I obviously am happy for tonight of what happened against Monza, uh, but but I watch it and I and I the first thing I keep coming back to and maybe this is just a character flaw of myself. There would not be a race for fourth. It, it would be well, they would be well ahead of the others. 
they should be well ahead of the others because when when they play as I did tonight, which by the way, it is easy to write off. And I, I think I saw somebody in the Patriot group chat mention this about the uh, the level of opponent that they have played uh, since the Rossi has arrived. And that, uh, of course, there's no doubting that, okay, yes, they they uh, started easy with the likes of uh, Verona, Salernitana. Okay, fine. This is Monza. Um, but they weren't, Andy, they, even if that is the case, if I want to grant that premise as to why the argument should, why I, I, I should accept that as some sort of a, a negative or blemish on the record of uh, Daniele De Rossi th- thus far, they weren't winning those games anyway. Uh, didn't matter who it was. No. So, I, I, I mean. It, and it's not even it, about who you're playing. It's no, about how you're it, playing, it, how you no, are approaching it, these games. What happens exactly. on the pitch? Because what happens on the pitch is we have a team that right now looks like a team. We have a team that looks like a team. We have a team. I never thought I would see that they were this would happen, by the way. Look at the XG of Roma in some of these last games under De Rossi for years when this stupid statistical data point arrived. I I was very boomer about it because I thought it was stupid. I thought it didn't tell the full story. But then I began to embrace it a little more, a little more, and then to the point where I am now, where I, I love it. For years, Roma would have an XG of like 25, but they would still not score a fucking goal. And this was, this was a theme under Paolo Fonseca. Uh, and frankly, uh, last season... And year one under Jose Mourinho as well. Uh, Not so much in the early part of this season. But, man, what they would create relative to what would actually be atop and on the scoreboard was so frustrating to watch unfold before your eyes. And you think to yourself, man, uh, just somebody, something in in the universe, in the ether, okay, cursed us hates us, whatever mindset you prefer to subscribe to. I look at now, Roma, I think they ended today. Well, here, I'll put the data up on the screen now. They ended tonight with an XG of under two. And they end the match with four goals. That's what the good teams do. Thank, I mean, I never thought I would see this day. I mean, I'm going to die of a heart attack prematurely uh, in the coming years anyway. So I'm glad yeah. that I was Am able I to witness have to this. to do this podcast on my own? Are you? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, I never thought I would live to see this time where Roma are outperforming. What, Roma the actually, actually playing like a football team, like a like a good football team. Actually, Roma. Uh, yes. Putting the pieces together, putting the ingredients together, and actually coming out with something that makes sense, that looks good. <laughs> Both on paper and on the pitch. Yes. Wow. <laughs> what, what, what do you attribute that to, though? Um, the manager. Because the manager. Well, no. I mean, what, what are we supposed to attribute it to? What changed? The manager doesn't mean that there was. Well, obviously, but, but I mean, like the thing I was complaining about the last week. Is like the attitude? Is it? Is it it's actually everything. body snatching? It, it's everything, I, John. It's everything. A manager comes in, a manager works on everything. A manager works on everything. A manager is supposed to work on everything. A manager is supposed to work on attitude, on tactics, on mentality, on on the spirit of sacrifice, on hierarchy, making the important players feel important, making the others also feel important in a different respect. That's what De Rossi has been doing. Rewarding those who perform well and have the ones who aren't. What is the Glenn Gary, um, Alec Baldwin? What does he say to the um, not coffee is for um, it's coffee. walk or fuck or what? It's, it's like, fuck or walk. We have fuck, fuck or walk. Or walk. Hit, you do it or you <laughs> hit the bricks, pal. You hit are gone. Pal. Hit the bricks, pal, because you are gone. Go. <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> uh, that is a set of steak knives. <laughs> no second prize a set of steak knives third prize you're third fired prize, you're gone third prize you're fired you're fired yeah pretty and much i think is, that's what the rossi did 
That's what, but, but that's what they needed. Man, hey, Rui Patricio, you, you, you want to be, uh, you want to continue with this bidone type of behavior? Hit the bricks. It is fuck or walk. Sit your ass down. Okay, done. I don't care how much in transfer fee we paid for you. I don't care how much we paid to you on wage. I don't care who's your agent? I don't care how, how yeah, experienced well, oh, you are. That, yes. You know? Yes. Great point. That is one thing I think that has to uh, listen in terms of impact of things that Aussie has done. I think we could point to uh, various numbers of things. Again, tactically, technically, nobody, again, I, I said one of my first words about him arriving at Roma were the tactics, how he was not doing the adjustments necessary when he was at Spout. Clearly, he learned from that. I mean, if you look, man, you want tears are going to stream down my face momentarily when I begin to talk about this. I mean, I, I, I cannot allow this to come out because I will probably cry more than when our, uh, our, our latest, my, when my daughter was born just like a week ago. We saw a four-man defense and a three-man defense in the same in the same match. Uh, just how? Wow! Wow! Fantastic! Fantastic! I, I mean, I, I loved, I loved everything tactically that Aussie did tonight. There was, I, I, you know, how we could just, if we just want to summarize this, if we want to like encapsulate this, to to. Uh, represent the further or, or the, the greater change that Roma has done under De Rossi. Just say the word midfield. Man, there is a midfield at IS Roma. You could, for the first six months, the number of times you and I came on to this podcast, recorded, and talked about, oh my gosh, Paredes, my gosh. Uh, Cristante, Awar, Pellegrini, J just wh why is there a black hole in the middle of the pitch? The, wh why is there nothing connecting to the attack? Nothing. And now you could make the case that is probably the strongest department of Roma. How is that possible? Tactics. Uh, De Rossi clearly unlocked something. The attitude as well. That is something, I, again, the, the psychological part of it. If the professionals uh, at Roma that have been hired over, over all of these years can't figure it out, I'm certainly not in a position to try and understand it. But let, let's just say what it is. Uh, De Rossi unlocked this team from a tactical point of view. And... You you said the in, the right ingredients last week. You you said something to you, that all see has found like the right ingredients. That is a perfect way to put it, man. He sees something, and I kind of laugh because if we remember, one of the first things that all see said was, "Well, when I received the call from Roma, I was very surprised because uh, I did not think I did not think they needed to change anything. I did not think they were in a position to 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 change manager. I I was surprised by it." Uh, and I laugh because, yeah, he was so surprised by it and so uh, so shocked to think that nothing really needed to change it, Roma, that uh, he changed everything about the team. He changed everything. He, he took the team uh, that was inside like this little box and he just shook it out and dumped it all into the bin and uh, started from scratch in terms of tactics and the way this team is uh, uh, going to play, the way they are going to set up, uh, their approach in these matches. It's astonishing to me, astonishing you can have such a turnaround. Because if we think about it, I mean, just look at the look at the history, the history of the Roma in terms of uh, just in terms of in, interim managers. We talk about the one of uh, Ranieri, Andrea Zoli. Uh, listen, you have an in interim manager because. 100% of the time, the team is playing like crap. Very rarely, okay, do bring in somebody new. And it is a turnaround of this magnitude. I mean, usually these managerial changes are done to sort of right the ship. I, I, I mean, if there is a, I, I mean, the bottom half of Serie A, 
it's like so quintessentially Italian football, the way they do this, this thing with managers where you bring the same guy back two or three times because you are too cheap to find a new name. This is all done to right the ship. It is not done. It is not done to raise your level. It is not done to to reach an objective. It is done to to avoid things. It is done to avoid relegation. It is done. It is done to uh, avoid from things going to complete and total shit. They're not done to do this. I I mean, no, nobody with a straight face will look you in the eye and and say to you that they could have ever foreseen this comic based on what we saw in those first six months of the season. Nobody, you, me, sure, we could have expected the team to improve and do better because, frankly, the bar was so low, they couldn't have done worse. I did not see this coming. The fact that is coming off the back of De Rossi's tactical acumen and the things he has learned and the growth he has made as a manager. Yes, this team has grown. Um, but especially after what I saw from him at Spal, to to see him grow this much in such a short period of time as a manager, I, I, I have to tell you, I am blown away. Never would have foreseen it coming. I, I mean, for you, you said, and I agree, and everybody would agree, obviously, that all see is the thing behind this turnaround. Um the unlocking though of so many of these players, I, I mean that's where I I would assume you too. Like you, you look at Paredes today and then you compare it to the Paredes for the first six months. Again, it's a body double. It's not the same guy. It's astonishing to me that you have these same guys and just with like snap of a finger unlocks every bit of potential quality, everything about them. Um, you said it perfectly, man. Like the, the ingredients that he has put into this recipe is perfect. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked, shocked. I got to put in the, the meme, uh, the shock because First truly, reaction, shock, 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 uh, shock. <laughs> First reaction, shock. Uh, quoting the great Matteo Renzi, Matteo, we miss you. Um, we no, do. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 true. It's 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 shocking how I think easy it is actually been as it yes. has actually been for De Rossi mm. to get into these players' heads because, as you say, uh, six weeks ago we were being dismantled by Milan, the same Milan who are really not that impressive of a team, and we know that now. We didn't know that when we were seeing them get absolutely crushed. I, I was about to aspects. say, I, well, yeah, Monza uh, did. Yeah. I mean, who did they beat some? Uh, yeah. two weeks? Monza scored four goals against Milan. Against Milan, <laughs> so, yes. Four. Um, it, it's, but it, that's, that's my main conclusion. It's shocking how easy it was for De Rossi, a beginner, an amateur, first-time mm. coach, really, because I'm not even going to count the spell. Uh, spell really. <laughs> honestly i mean 17 games what are you gonna do you know um oh man jotaco this, pina is going to choke it was, uh, it, was it was that simple it is that simple it was there it was there the team was there the players were there the qualities were there they also just came in understood the assignment understood the moment because he's been through those moments before as a player He's seen those. He knew what can be expected of him and what he needs to work on. He knew that he didn't have the experience, the, the CV, to, to impress anybody and didn't want to impress anybody. He continues to highlight hard work, tactics. Tactics entails more physicality. You need more pace. If you're going to control the ball, you need to last longer. You need more stamina. You need more footwork. Bam, bam. All these things that are simple. This is what yes. a coach is supposed to do. And and it's this is not I'm not taking shots on anybody here. But De Rossi <laughs> just came yeah. in. De Rossi just came in and did the simple things. He did the simple things. He put players, not only the star players, but other players as well, in a position to be more successful than they were. Because yeah, nobody, again, let's remember, nobody, aside from Lukaku or Dybala, nobody was having a good season. And perhaps Bove <laughs> is the rare exception. But tell me, 
which non-star player on this team was having a good season up until De Rossi's arrival. And now we can we can talk about Hoysen. We can talk about Cristante. We can talk about Paredes. We can talk about Sardaras Moon. We can talk about Angelino. We, we, it, it's it's there. The the team is clicking, but it's not clicking. It's not like we're seeing Guardiola at, at work. I was just about to say, man. It's not like no. he, he 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 split the atom or something. Yes. I mean, he he truly did it's come that in simple. here. I, I, you, I, Obviously, I'm talking about like his tactical acumen, but but as you just said, it is not as if the guy came in here and started, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing uh, nuclear f- uh, fission in here. I, I I truly think, and you just put it perfectly. You took the words right from my mouth. Um, he really did just do the easy things. Um, you were right. There was nobody having a good season up until this point. But I, I mean, even you have to say like. Yes, he, he was doing the easy things. He he put players in a much better position to to succeed. But man, I, I have to tell you, to, to see a midfield go from just a, a black hole, an absolute farce of a department to what it is now, again, arguably the strongest portion. Uh, yes, Dybala is doing great. Yes, uh, Romelu Lukaku is still doing good. Um, the midfield now, man, just the way Cristante, Paredes, Pellegrini complement each other now, Relative because somebody the read them. Somebody read them. Somebody is not asking mm. Paredes to be a player that he's not. Somebody mm. understands Paredes. Somebody knows him. De Rossi played with Paredes. De Rossi arguably played with Paredes oh, at his most hell, futsal era. Great, yeah. You know? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paredes was De Rossi's backup. Paredes was yes. the guy that you, you that Spalletti put on when, when, when uh, De Rossi was out of gas or was suspended. <laughs> Paredes was the guy. So... But but the thing is, everybody knows what they have to do. And nobody's being asked too much. I mean, the no. only ones that are being asked a lot are the players such as Pellegrini, Dybala, who have the quality to handle more responsibility. But that's about, about say, it. And it's, that's about it's it. That's right that your star players are asked a lot of. It's uh, okay. It's normal. But that's, that's your way in. Your way in. And then for De Rossi, another way in. You have to value also the players that are not star players, the players that come off the bench, the players that see limited minutes. I mean, he just went on the zone and, and he praised Zeki Selig, who hardly played any minutes under him in these opening uh, five weeks of his tenure. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a team that has been revitalized on a tactical, physical, but also morale level. Everybody feels mm. important now. It cannot be said about the team that we saw in the first six months of the season. Those players did not feel feel valued. There were some that did, but most of them, if you looked at their attitude on the pitch, they had nothing to show for why they were being put on the pitch. Mm. That's a great point. And you said something a couple of minutes ago that I I guess I I want to go back to just very quickly. it is, I guess, take a depraved mind to to go back and want to willingly uh, uh, remember and have to go back and view sort of the uh, number of times it happened to him. I think that also having been through this moment where you have a season where expectations are here and the team is like you can't even see my hand as to what the actual concrete results have been. I have to tell you the fact that uh, he had been through it so many times at Roma. I mean, uh, just count the number of uh, within the last like five years, the latter stages of De Rossi's career, how many times he had to go through something similar to this. Yeah. How um, many times was he being, I mean, he went from, from Luis Enrique to Zeman. Remember like <laughs> how that changed for him? Yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> completely different worlds. I mean, in that span, think about it. 2011 yes. to 2016 when when uh, Garcia is sacked. I mean, De Rossi sees the whole spectrum of, of what yes. it means to be a coach. And in what setting, in what circumstance. He understood I, I mean, the assignment, John. It's that simple. He knew what he was going into. To me, that like people say, oh, well, the Friedkins took a shot. The Friedkins did take a shot, but they took a shot on somebody who knew what he was in for. You didn't go for Beppe Iacchini. You know, you're, you're, you you right. didn't go for somebody that would have to, would need like 
a month to understand the reality. De Rossi was ready from the get-go because he'd lived it his whole life. Absolutely. I, I mean, again, this is definitely uh, a a point of the season that is not even remotely foreign to him. You want to talk about knowing the assignment. I mean, at this point, he would be, he's not the pupil. He is the teacher at this point when it comes to, again, Roma, Ice Roma. Expectations are up here. Where we are at the table down here, we are falling woefully short as to what not only the supporters, but us ourselves expected in terms of objectives. We are not fulfilling what we wanted. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. The thing I, I am eager to see, because, again, he, he he's not splitting the atom. He is not the unlock some sort of new... A, a, a new way of uh, seeing football or tactics. I, I mean, he obviously has said some of the coaches that have imparted or, or had an impact on the way he views or the way he prefers his teams to play football. Um, as far as, though, the, I guess, the way he has changed things just beyond the tactical point of view, I think that's the other part of this. The The, the tactics are obviously one thing of course but man the attitude the attitude of these guys I, I just at points in various away matches this season roma were the walking dead i i, I go i say the same thing about or i reference the same two away matches san siro and liguria quite quite literally man they were dead they were dead on the rival in both of those games. And I don't care if you have the tactics of Pep, uh, if you have Pep sitting on the bench. I, I, I don't care if Ancelotti's on the bench. If you go out there with that attitude, it, 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 it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Um, that is something where, again, I keep going, I, I keep saying like we need some sort of explanation, but is it just simply... Well, we like playing for this manager more, so we're we're going to be more uh, uh, willing or more happy to play for this guy. Or uh, in the case of Paredes, he is putting me in a different position. He uh, different things are being asked of me from a technical point of view, and now yeah. I can express myself better. Because I, I, for me, you obviously you have to have both of those. You, you can't have one without the other. I, you obviously need a team to be motivated, have the right attitude, have the right character, uh, displaying the right character in order to get results, in order to uh, achieve things. Okay, fine. Duh. Everybody knows that. Um, the tactical part is very easy to explain. That That is, uh, okay, well, uh, uh, now we uh, we don't have uh, fullbacks that uh, can't cross the ball. Uh, you know, we have a functional midfield, and by functional, I mean being able to complete the pass into the final third of the pitch. Uh, what I can't explain is, Man, do they they look willing to apply themselves? They look willing to go balls to the wall for De Rossi. Uh foot all the way on the pedal, all the way down to the floorboard. Man, just the application, the willingness to go out and, and fight. It's easy to explain the tactical portion, but this is the part where I just there's frustration, but it. I am also obviously impressed at how much more they, they, they I, are showing. I think, the no, Rossi. honestly, I, those things go hand in hand, John. If you listen to De Rossi, he says the key to a good team is for the players to have fun on the pitch. If the players enjoy themselves, if the players are enthusiastic about the idea of going and stepping on the pitch, they will put in the work. They will give you something back. See, he said it in his last press conference, it needs to be a fair exchange. As a manager, I have to put them in a position to have fun, to to play great football, but in exchange, they have to deliver results. They have to deliver hard work. And, and, And so it goes hand in hand. It goes hand in hand with the tactics involved. It goes hand in hand with how important you make somebody feel. So morale, because Pellegrini now you're giving him the ball more. You're saying, mm. hey, man, you're just as good as Paolo Di Bala, okay? You, you're not second fiddle to anybody. You're the captain. You have the quality. 
to be important. You have the quality to lead this team. And what has Pellegrini done but lead this team to good results by scoring, assisting? I mean, this man has turned back the clock. This man yes. right now is playing out of his mind. Out of his mind. In and this five is weeks. Next spell, uh, probably in 18 months, no? Yes. I, I mean, this, this is the best year. 2000, I would say, I would say since the winter of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I would say 2021, yeah. 2022. I agree. That's, I so, do agree. Yes. So the, and, and it all comes down to that. It, it, it comes down to making everybody feel important and then giving them the tools to succeed. It doesn't mean that you have to build around a whole complex system. De Rossi is clearly working with each game, trying to improve that part of, 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 the, of, of the game, the tactical part. He's trying to get the team to, to play better, aesthetically, yeah. oh, ideologically. Yeah. But from a man, man-to-man perspective, it's all about the morale. It's all about getting into these players' heads. And, 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 and De Rossi got into Pellegrini's head, for example, within the first week. I mean, that was it, you know? Yes. So I don't know if these are the things that we will see, that we might see if De Rossi were to become a long-term option. Because whenever you step in in the midseason, I mean, it, 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 it's glaring how, how, how obvious a change is needed and then the, how the players react to it. The reaction is always expected when you change managers. Yes. But what we're seeing right now is a team that I think is 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 almost going beyond what was initially asked of them. I don't think anybody expected, not even the Friedkins expected this kind of reaction no, out of no. De Rossi and his men. I don't think anybody could have expected this. I, again, I, I think you would be you would be being intellectually dishonest if you were to say, oh, well, I, I, I knew Roma could do this. I knew they were capable of uh, pulling this off. They just, you know, they, they needed they needed a different manager willing to express football in a different way. I, I just, I, I, I can't do that. As far as the Europa League goes, so obviously good result in the league. At some point, Bologna, Atalanta, they face off uh, this weekend. By the time this comes out, uh, we, we, well, no, this will come out before they play. So we will have to see how that match uh, eventually shakes out. As far as Europa League goes, this is where, again, De Rossi does not have experience as far as having to uh, balance multiple competitions. I'm very curious to see what he does in the first leg. Obviously, it is uh, it's it's home, and then you go away to England, and uh, in the second leg. So far, he has shown obviously a willingness to to rest some guys, but not make major changes. What are you expecting for this first leg? Because I know you and I both said our expectations are relatively low for this Brighton tie, not. I wouldn't say simply because we're saying, well, Brighton is a better team than Roma. I, I just think that obviously this is a very um, delicate period still. It, as much as we are touting De Rossi, it, it's still under 10. I, I think this was either match nine or 10. I think it's nine, seven wins of nine, right? I think it is something like that. So, so we're still, I don't want to get too carried away, but it is still very, very, very early into this into this thing with De Rossi. So it's still a delicate period. But I am very curious to see how they are able to express themselves uh, with this tie being right in the middle of a very crucial period in terms of the league calendar. Uh, just very quickly before we go, what 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 are you expecting for for the first leg? What? I don't want to say this tie in general, but uh, I mean, come on, you, you have to like the chances of Roma at least in this first like to get something, yeah. maybe two, uh, two to one, three to one, something. I no, mean, no, definitely there has to be the kind of enthusiasm that we we saw against Feyenoord. That has to be, and I I expect the team to continue to improve also just by what they show on the pitch. I expect them to to learn to dominate because it takes time. It takes time to transition from one way of seeing the pitch of one way of attacking the opponent compared to what Roma are doing now. It really entails a whole different understanding of the game and uh, just the physicality behind it, the, how demanding it is. So 
I expect them to actually grow into what De Rossi is trying to get them to do. And and honestly, a match at home, first leg against an opponent like Brighton that are playing in the Europa League for the first time in their history, you have to take advantage yes. of it. That has to be sort of the focal point is you have to dominate. So you have to continue to what to do what you're doing. You have to control possession. You have to play fast again against a team that likes to do more or less the same thing. Um, you cannot you cannot let them into the game because they will dictate the game once they're back home. So Thursday it has to be we are the veterans. We are the ones who know what this competition is all about. We've been there. We've done it. Uh, and look at us. We are on our way up because that's been the message to me from Roma with the Rossi. It's been, look at us. We're here. We're doing this. We are learning. We're improving. The the first six months, forget about it. This is who we are. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think, again, at least in this first leg, you, you have to. This is where the likes of uh, the, the veterans, Smalling, uh, Lukaku, they, this is where they need to shine. Uh, impose yourself. This is obviously, again, as you said, not their first, uh, not their first goal at it, at a high level in terms of European play. So I, I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves and make the prediction of, oh yeah, they're absolutely going to progress, but one step at a time. Uh, we will be back after that match uh, following Thursday. So fingers crossed. Uh, but until then, ciao.